Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climbed the online VGC 15 ladder. Uh, this episode, I'm basically using a lot of the Pokemon you've seen me use throughout the course of the series, with Zapdos, Heatran, Landorus, Kangaskhan, Conkeldur, Hydreigon. Um, still using Kangaskhan, but I'm going to be switching Mega soon. Uh, I think rankings actually reset in four days or so, so we basically have four days to reach... Uh, uh, 1900, but my first opponent of the day is going to be Paul with a rating of 2009. That's absurd, and I'm actually really excited to be featuring this battle. Paul is one of the best trainers in America. We've actually played before. For those that don't know, uh, this is Paul Chua, who won the 2014 U.S. National Championships. 2013, excuse me. Um, placed in the top four in 2012 and 2014 uh, as a senior, and he finally aged up to a Masters division. I actually eliminated him from the semifinals of U.S. Nationals in 2012. Uh, Paul top cut Worlds in 2013, uh, missed out last year, but uh, he's a fantastic Fantastic, fantastic player, and uh, definitely one of the top players in the game. Obviously, you saw by his rating with over 2,000, so it should be great regardless of whether I win or lose. And I actually played Paul before. I played this exact team, so it uh, should be exciting to feature. But you see, Paul's got a team of Jellicent, Abomasnow, Landers, T, Scrafty, Togekiss, and Heatran. So uh, looks like a team, uh, a Trick Room Hail team. Uh, I've actually run Trick Room Hail. I ran the core of Scrafty, Abomasnow, and Jellicent uh, in the past. Um, so it's really solid. Uh, it's Mega Abomasnow as well, so that should be interesting. Uh, I, unfortunately, having Kangaskhan here is actually pretty bad. Uh, I don't have many great ways to deal with this team in general. Uh, last time we played, he led with Togekiss and Jellicent. Um, so I'm thinking of leading with Landris and... Uh, Landris and... Oh, I don't even have Bishop on this team. I forgot I got rid of Bishop as well, so that makes my matchup even worse. Um, let's see... I like leading Landris and Zapdos, to be quite honest, with Conkeldur and Heatran in the back. Um, do I want Kang in this match? I don't think so. He's got Intimidate. I can't really touch him. Yeah, I'm going to go with those four. Uh, this is not an optimal matchup for me, though, for sure. I used to have Mawile and Bisharp on this team, and those definitely made my last match with Paul a lot easier. So, this is going to be scary, and I think if Paul wins this, he's actually going to be number one in the entire world. So, uh, it should be an exciting battle. Paul's going to lead with Jelson and Togekiss, though, against my Landers and Zapdos. Uh, that's a pretty solid lead matchup here. Of course, I can just Rock Slide immediately and Thunderbolt. Uh, but he can just follow me and go for a Trick Room, which is slightly problematic in itself. Um, and let's see what I've got in the back. We've got Heatran and Conkeldur. But the thing is, if I get a flinch with Rock Slide, then that's going to put me so ahead in the game. Um... I'm thinking, is there really any other better place I can make? I think I'm, I I think I should just go for the KO this turn. Uh, just force off an offensive pressure right from the start. Uh, bait in the Abomasnow and then switch out to my Heatran. And if, like I said, if I do get the flinch, that would be uh, fantastic. So yeah, I'll just go T-Bolt into Jellison and Rock Slide. He does go for the follow me as expected. So let's see. Landris. Oh, Jellison avoids the Rock Slide. <sighs> That's unfortunate. So I'm going to pick out the Knockout on Togekiss, but I miss out on free damage on Slay Jellison, which is bad because he actually carries Water Spout, so... Um, that's really annoying to see. He's gonna get Trick Room. Oh, he doesn't go for Trick Room. He goes for Water Spout, so Rock Slide damage would have been fantastic there. Um, <sighs> that's it. I'm not gonna complain, though. That's fine. It's just part of the game. Uh, I'm gonna bring in Conkeldur here because it deals with the Bomb of Snow pretty well, and I think he might want to bring in a Bomb of Snow. And it's actually good because he didn't get a free Trick Room up that first turn, but Paul actually brings in the Scrafty, which is also a great switch in for him. Uh, as his Intimidate is going to activate here. Uh, however, I'm still in a decent position. He's probably going to want to fake out Zapdos, uh, and I do have Rocky Helmet on Zapdos. So I'm going to go for the knockoff onto the Jellicent and go for a Roost with Zapdos, just in case he doesn't fake out the Zapdos. But he does fake out the Zapdos, so uh, Scrafty there is going to take some Rocky Helmet damage. Uh, Zapdos flinches. He just goes for another Water Spot there with Jellicent, though. Let's see if Jellicent can hang on. Nice, it hangs on with 16 HP, and Conkeldur does get the knockoff off. Uh, oh wow, with a critical hit to boost, I think. Nice. Yeah, so that definitely helps out a lot, and I guess that kind of makes up for the original Rock Slide miss there. But 3-2 my favorite, uh, and Landers is actually Paul's last Pokemon, not the uh, Abomasnow I was expecting. Uh, but that's a good Pokemon for Paul to have in the back, for sure. 
Uh, now I'm actually in a pretty rough position. He can probably just rock slide here with the Landorist. And Landorus is not the Pokemon I want to, to have in the back, but... You know what, I'm just going to go straight for the Ice Punch here. I don't want to switch out because he's probably going to Drain Punch the Conkeldur slot. And I'm going to go for the Roost here with Zapdos in case I'm faster. But he is just going to get the Rock Slide off. So if I can avoid a flinch here, I can get the Ice Punch onto Landorus. Um, and then I think Heatran might be able to help close out this game. Let's see. He does go for the Drain Punch with Scrafty. How much does it do to Conkeldur? Puts me at 56. And that's problematic. As I at least get the Ice Punch off, so let's see how much damage this does. Ooh, not as much as I was hoping for. Um, that's actually really bad. I'm assuming that's Scarf Landorus. If it's Scarf Landorus, I can actually still win this, but if it's not, then he can just protect Earthquake and that's gonna be game. Um, but if it is Scarf, then he has to Rock Slide here. But the question is who he targets with the Scrafty. You know what? I'm just going to Drain Punch the Scrafty and Heat Wave. Oh, but it's not... Oh, wow, he just went for the Earth... Yeah, okay, so... Not the Scarf, Conkeldur, uh, Landorus I was hoping for, so... Paul's going to knock my, <laughs> my Pokemon out there. Um, and take a pretty clean 2-0 win, so... Uh, props to Paul, I don't think bringing Heat right here was the right call, and he made an excellent uh, choice by not bringing in Obama Snow. Um... Because he knew I probably had Heatran in the back, so had I had, for example, Kangaskhan in the back, or even Hydreigon, uh, the end game would have been a lot better, but I'm just going to lose my Heatran there, as Paul takes a really impressive win there. A very quick battle, but I think that featured uh, why Paul is such a strong opponent. Um, obviously one of the best players in America and in the world, so that was exciting, and even though it was a loss, uh, I'm always really excited to feature top quality players, and, um, you know, the Rock Slide miss in the beginning definitely hurt, because, like I said, it would have given me a flinch probability, uh, Water Spell would have done considerably less damage as well, so, uh, unfortunate, but, you know, I did get the crit on Jellison as well, so I can't really complain there. Um, though, had I not gotten the crit, it would have been an interesting game, because he actually wouldn't be able to switch into the Landers for free, so I would have been able to get a couple more Roosts off with the Zapdos, but, Seeing how he had uh, Landris in the back, I don't think there was really much I could have done. So, uh, rating falling to 1832 there. So, not losing too many points. Obviously, Paul was so high uh, rated. Um, but, a uh, very quick game to start off the day. But, uh, you know, it's always fun to feature some of the best players in the world. And uh, that's a name you should definitely be looking out for because uh, he definitely will be doing very well at live tournaments throughout this year. So, uh, glad to face him again. Um, and yeah, it's just a lot of fun, and it's so rare to see a Trick Room Hail team, especially with the Bombas, though, so I think that featured some of the cooler Pokemon, especially Jellicent, Togekiss, uh, Scrafty, none of those are too common in the format, so it's kind of see uh, cool to see Paul going for that. Um, so we're going to look for the second battle of the day now, but uh, this team is pretty weak. For example, had I had Bisharp, which I originally had on the team, uh, over Heatran, it would have made that match a lot easier because he had the double Intimidate, and Bisharp actually gave gives Paul's team a lot of trouble. Um, but instead, uh, you know, I decided to replace it for Heatran because this team is kind of weak to Sylveon and I didn't want to be open to Sylveon sweeps. So I figured it was worth it, but unfortunately that match not really panning out as well as I would have liked for it to. Um, yeah, and I'm thinking, you know, if I had uh, either Kangaskhan or... Uh, the Hydreigon there in the back, I probably could have been able to maybe squeak out a win, but second opponent of the day is going to be 1814 rated player from Japan, so another highly rated player. Also with crazy Pokemon, Spiragle, Greninja, Magnezone, Gardevoir, Talonflame, and Crocodile. Uh, lots of unique choices, especially in the Crocodile and Magnezone, so uh, that's interesting to see. I think I'm going to lead with Hydreigon here, just because the Smeargle might be Scarfed. If it is, I can just knock it out right away. Um... And I'm thinking with Kangaskhan next to that. Yeah, his team is really frail to Kangaskhan in general. So I'll go Kangaskhan. Um, Conkeldur not wants... Uh, Conkeldur likes this match, but the Gardevoir and Talonflame, of course, are really, really scary to go up against. Um, Landers is nice for the Intimidates. And bar the Greninja. Greninja is really the biggest threat in this game, I think. If that can go down, then everything else has a pretty good time. With, and Kangaskhan Hydreigon deals with Greninja relatively well. So I go King okay, Hydreigon. Kind of want Zapdos to knock out the Talonflame. Uh, I think I'm going to bring Heatran here to wall the Magnezone, the Gardevoir, and the Talonflame. And for the last one, I'm thinking Conkeldur just because Heatran covers the Pokemon that Conkeldur is weak to. Uh, though I also kind of want to go with Lander, so it's between those two. But 
I feel a bit better with Conkeldur given that half his team is weak to fighting. Um, though that does make my Talonflame matchup a bit worse, so maybe I want to bring Zapdos or Talon uh, Landers instead. Uh, definitely a tough call here. Um, I think I'm going to go with Landris actually. If I can knock out Greninja, then Landris kind of sweeps through his team. Uh, but this is a tough match, especially because my opponent has a lot of interesting Pokemon choices. Uh, Crocodile might actually have the Choice Scarf as well, um, so maybe Smurgle was Focus Sash. But if it is, then I do have Kangaskhan to deal with it, but this should be a very interesting match. Uh, so two really highly rated players with really unique teams to kick off the Road to Rank today, which is always fun to feature. So I'm going to go with Kangaskhan and Hydreigon, my opponent's going to go with Talonflame and uh, Smeargle, which uh, I'm fine with, but the thing is he's probably going to Tailwind here with Talonflame, and maybe uh, Protect with the Smeargle, which is, uh, I don't really want to deal with that. I think I can just Draco the Talonflame here. Let's see, my opponent also had Gardevoir in the back, I'm assuming that's Mega Gardevoir. And, uh, that's kind of problematic. Because here he can just, uh, protect or King Shield or Spiky Shield with Smeargle, set up Tailwind with Talonflame, then Gardevoir can come in and just sweep through. Although I do have Heatran, which can help. Um, so the question is whether- I but if I knock out Talonflame, then, uh, I didn't bring even, even bother bringing Conkeldur in this match. I think I can just Draco Smeargle here- Draco, Talonflame, and- Double Edge Smeargle, but that might be Scarf Smeargle. So, hmm. You know what, I'm gonna Draco Talonflame and Double Edge the Smeargle. I, I'm assuming based off the Crocodile, Crocodile my opponent's got in the back, let its focus sashed. Um, but let's see. Okay, Smeargle does go for the Spiky Shield, so uh, as expected. Draco should knock out Talonflame, but it does go for the Tailwind, so I do call the first turn correctly. There wasn't much I could have done to prevent that, quite honestly. Uh, so this is slightly problematic. Uh, Hydreigon at least connects with Draco Meteor, though, so this should KO Talonflame. Yep, that picks up the one-hit KO. So I go up 4-3, but my opponent gets Tailwind up, which is really problematic because of uh, the Gardevoir that he's got in the back. And Double Edge here is just going to uh, allow me, uh, give me some damage. Not too much, but, uh, you know, now Tailwind's up, and my opponent's got a Smeargle on their Tailwind, so that's really scary. Uh, but Crocodile actually comes in for my opponent instead of Gardevoir, which, uh, I'm more relieved to see, but that doesn't make things any easier. Now here, the question is whether I want to pull out any switches or not. Uh, Kangaskhan isn't intimidated, so Crocodile didn't have Intimidate, so that probably means it has Moxie instead. Um... And I do have Heatran in the back. Let's see. Yeah, so that probably means my opponent didn't bring Gardevoir, which is a good sign. I just want to target down Crocodile, honestly. But I don't know whether he's going to target Hydreigon or Kangaskhan. Well, I'll Draco the Crocodile here and protect with Kangaskhan to scout out what he goes for. And if he doesn't target the Kangaskhan with... Uh, if he targets Hydreigon with the attack, that's fine, because Landers can come- He goes for the Storm Throw Act- Oh, nice! <laughs> uh, and that's actually Anger Point Crocodile. I did not consider- Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> As Hydreigon actually hangs on and gets a Draco Meteor off. Uh, some next level strats right there. Let's see how much DM does here. A very fair amount, actually, given that I was intimidated. Uh, and that's actually Citrus Berry Crocodile. Jeez. <laughs> um, so, pretty wacky to see that, but uh, cool as well, honestly. And that's scary. That's definitely scary. I burned a turn of Tailwind there, which is good, but now he can just Dark Void and Rock Slide. Um, and that's really bad. I'm thinking of switching into- basically, I want to get Landers and Hydreigon in for the end game at this point, I think. Um, I protected with Kangaskhan. So I'm thinking of switching into Heatran, because Heatran's not really going to do much uh, at this point anyway. Yeah, I'll switch in Heatran and just go for the double edge onto the 
uh, Crooked Island. If he misses the Dark Void, then I'm just going to be able to knock out Crook. Uh, but like I said, that way I can get a free switch and back into Lander's T and Hydreigon, which uh, deals with this team pretty well. He does go for Dark Void. Let's see if it connects with both Pokemon. If it misses Kangaskhan here, that would be fantastic. Oh, Kangaskhan avoids it! We will get an attack off. Oh, he goes for the crunch onto Kang. Nice. Uh, so really smart play there on my opponent's end. Uh, not risking the rock slide. Uh, <laughs> uh, gave me that false sense of hope. And this is bad because now I don't have a Pokemon I can protect. Huh, this is... Wow. Smeargle and Crocodile uh, just wrecking me right now. <sighs> Let's see. My opponent has one more turn of Tailwind left. I can bring in Landorus, but then he can just Crunch. But if I bring in Hydreigon, he can just Rock Slide. This is bad. This is really bad. One of the craziest strategies I've ever seen, but it is really working out right now, and I have no way to touch that Crocodile. Um, I don't even know how I can win this at this point. I'm gonna bring in. I'll bring in Hydreigon. Uh, but that was a really good play on my opponent's end. Uh, just going for the Dark Void and the Crunch, uh, the safest play possible. I don't even know what I can do here. You know, I gotta try to protect with Heatran, and I'll just. I think I need to re re rely on Rock Slide flinches from uh, uh, Landorus at this point, honestly. And I'll go for the Draco onto Crocodile, but. Heatran is going to t take its first turn of sleep there. Dark Void coming out. Ah, Dark Void Smeargle. <laughs> Heatran's already asleep. Uh, that is going to put my Hydreigon to sleep. Let's see. Yep, he does go for the Rock Slide here. Oh, it actually missed Hydreigon. That's not what I wanted. I needed uh, Hydreigon to take a turn of sleep. I mean, to no get a knocked out there because I'd get a free switch into Landris. So that's really obnoxious, actually. As Tailwind Peter's out. I gotta hope that Heatran wakes up here and gets the Protect off, and I'm just gonna go for... It. I mean, he's gonna knock me out anyway, but... Uh, I actually lose momentum in terms of uh, Rockside missing there. Heatran does wake up, though, so giving me some hope uh, in this game. Let's see. Hydreigon, of course, is gonna take the turn of sleep, though. Another Dark Void coming out. And a Crunch coming out. Oh, so my opponent giving me a slight chance of getting back into this game because now Hydreigon might be able to wake up and Draco the Crocodile, but let's see. I'm gonna sub here with Heatran. And uh, a wake up here from Hydreigon would be clutch. That would be really, really nice right now. It woke up! It hit the Draco! Will it KO though? That Crocodile, I'm guessing, is pretty bulky. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness, you gotta excuse me guys, I am uh, hyped right now. Um, as the Smeargle is actually faster than Heatran, uh, I should probably re eevee that Heatran to make sure that should not be the case. Uh, so that's annoying, I'm gonna fall asleep once again, but now it comes down to what my opponent's last Pokemon is basically. If it's Greninja, I'm gonna be in some trouble. But if it's Gardevoir, then there's still some hope. Let's see. I did get very lucky that both my Pokemon are waking up so early, but, you know, that's the risk you run into when you uh, play with Dark Void Smeargle. Uh, my opponent's last one is Gardevoir. Okay, so this is actually still possible to win, uh, despite how crazy the beginning has been. I'm just going to go straight for a Heat Wave here, uh, and I'm not going to switch in my Landers. I'm just going to let Hydreigon faint. Though I probably could have should have protected there, maybe, instead. But we'll see. And that is Mega Gardevoir. So I'm surprised my opponent didn't bring in Mega Gardevoir earlier, but I guess, you know, wanted to go with the Anger Point strategy. So uh, this battle is really intense. Hydreigon takes a turn of sleep. What does Smeargo go for? Just Dark Voiding there, but both of my Pokemon still asleep. Uh, Heatran takes another turn of sleep, but it is faster than Gardevoir, which is good to know. Oh, so it goes for the Focus Blast! Yikes. That's going to knock out Heatran. Uh, not an attack I really wanted to see there, but, uh, you know, one of the riskiest moves you can have in VGC. I do get the free switch into Landorus, though, so I can just Earthquake. 
Uh, but the question is, do I want an Earthquake or do I want to go for Rock Slide Flinches at this point? That's Smeargle's definitely sashed. Hmm. You can just protect here too. You know what? I'm gonna go for Rock Slide, and I'm gonna Draco the Smeargle. I see protect. So if if uh, Hydreigon wakes up here, I can actually win. Oh, uh, but it uh, stays eternally. But there's still a chance because I can flinch with Rock Slide. And he can miss Dark Void, so the probability of him at, uh, getting an attack up, uh, here off is actually relatively slim. Let's see. Crit, <laughs> not what I needed. I need the flinch or the miss. Dark Void! Oh, no! <laughs> this Smeargle is just... <sighs> it's just doing work. I can still win uh, if Hydreigon wakes up here and Landorus wakes up afterwards, uh, but I do need flinches basically on my end. Um, well, this is coming down to the wire. This is a pretty crazy episode. Uh, Smeargle actually smartly goes for the spiky shield, uh, preventing me from potentially waking up and KOing it. As I do wake up and I'm not going to pick up the knockout. As Landorus takes his first turn of sleep, I assume Hyper Voice is coming out of Gardevoir here. Oh, but he goes for Icy Wind, which is a even better move for my opponent to have there. Wow. Knocks out Landris actually. Uh, so that was a crazy Mega Gardevoir. Um, Focus Blast Icy Wind. Uh, not moves you would normally see on Mega Gardevoir, but uh, two losses in today's episode. But you know what? I'm not going to complain. I think they really featured some amazing teams and players. Um, and obviously, you know, Paul was over 2,000 and the sixth second player was over, over 1,800. So. I'm not going to complain because uh, I think losses are even more important to post than wins. Uh, I think there's a lot to learn from it. In the last battle, there wasn't much I could have really done. I think having Kunkel there would have helped, but I had no idea what the Crocodile combo in the back there really was for. Um, and I learned my lesson there. I was anticipating Moxie, but I, now I learned like, Anger Point Crocodile is a thing. And you saw how much it wrecked. So uh, that's why Tailwind support is so, so strong in VGC. And. You know, it just allows for you to have a couple of turns of sweeps there, so... Um, two losses today, but you know what? I don't mind it because they were two fantastic games, and my opponent has some really awesome teams, so... I hope you guys enjoyed that episode. Uh, I think now it's really evident how weak this team is, uh, or how weak really the teams I've been throwing together are, because they're just kind of random Pokemon that are strong, but against teams with concrete strategies, they really fail, so... I definitely need to work on making a better team for the future. Uh, my rating there is going to fall. It shouldn't be below 1800, but uh, it's going to make the climb the next couple days even harder. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. It was pretty crazy. As always, leave a like if you did, and I'll see you tomorrow. All right, peace.